do the different table, but I've got something for you. Um, living in a big city has some advantages and also some disadvantages, but one is that people put their old stuff on the street for other people to collect. And if I find something, then maybe I take it with me. So take a look at this. Oh, well, that's not going to work. Well, that's better. As you can see here, this is a sewing machine. And well, I don't know anything more about this all other than it stood around. Oh, there's something working. So I guess it's at least many 20, 30 years old. And it's really hefty, it's like seven and a half kilos. And funny thing is, I already wanted to do a video like this because I upgraded my old sewing machine and therefore I have this one to spare. This is only five kilos and maybe five years of age. So I thought, why not disassemble both of them? Because I don't need them anymore and they are not worth anything today. And Nobody needs it and therefore. Um, and I think this will be a more than one video because obviously we have a lot to go through. So let's start. <clears throat> the experienced saw knows that you drive those devices not by just um, by hand, but you control the motor by your foot, so you have a pedal to do so. These old machines don't have a digital pedal, but analog ones. This one is for this machine, and this one is for the other one I just got from the street. And basically what they do is, wait, you, you got the plug and the plug goes into here and this is the plug that's connected to the machine so this one is for this one and this plug is for that and obviously they are not compatible and then the second cable comes out of them and goes into the into the foot device right into the pedal to control speed, so they are variable, so the further you push in, the faster the machine works. And I have an idea, I think, what they are working with, but to be sure, we have to take them apart. So, let's have a look. to take this apart. Yeah, that's easy. So, here we go. And it's not coming apart yet. There's no sticker under here. Oh. looks a lot like a screw to me. This won't work, but we try it anyway. Hmm. Nothing. Seems to have no effect. Easy. So what we got here? So. It's a nice action. So just to make clear, I'm not an electrician, so anything is just guesstimation but feel free to speculate with me in the comments below. 
while I take this apart. Okay, that's the easy part, that's the strain relief, so if you, if you tip over the cable, you won't rip it out of the plastic unit. It's a peasy. Then you see when pressing down, this thing goes through that thing, and this thing internally is connected to this thing, and then to the power. Righty. Nice screws. Righty, so... This is just to smooth out the impact from the start and stop, I think. Capacitor or something, yeah, this is a capacitor to smooth it out. And it's really hard. And you see it's just one cable. So what happens is that this one of these two pins will go directly into the machine and the other one is cut by this switch or resistor or whatever and <coughs> thus completing the circuit. Right? And when the circuit is completed then the power flows and the machine can do its thing. Let's remove more screws and ooh, that's different. And <clears throat> this one. And here we go. Just a bracket. One last screw. Ah, this is the this is the stop. Once I remove this, this will pop out and we see the spring underneath. That's what I think. And the white stuff on top. <coughs> the white stuff on top is... I don't know, maybe they tried to glue it in there, but... Then they should have glued the threads, but I don't know. So, why you no come apart? Because you need more force. Yeah, here we go. But that's not my style usually. Ah, there. Those, those hinges are just riveted. So if you want to get, you really need to get them out to get everything apart. And maybe you need to, to compress them to be able to slide them out again and we don't have time for that. So, here we are. Nothing special, but where is the... Hmm. Ah, what I'm looking for is this, this friend, this is the spring that probably sits here and pushes up. All right. So let's have a look at this. This is where the pedal pushed. And we have a lot going on, so perfect. I cleaned up a bit. Let's get rid of this because we know what this is doing. Now you're free. Okay. So the guesstimation is this, in this state, everything is disconnected. Once we get on here, the resistor will block, maybe um, will 
maybe block completely or allow a little current to flow through to get the motor started. And therefore these springy things to keep it on the contacts here. And then you press, press, press and you, the resistance is lowered and lowered and if you fully press then the top will connect and there won't be any resistance anymore because the current will flow here or the power, whatever, sue me. <laughs> will throw through here and the machine gets full power and once you lift it this one stops, is disengaged, like here, oh, that's better, and disengage, so the resistor will do its resistance thing, and then it's getting less and less and less until this connection up here is broken. Oh, this is better, better. So this is broken, and it will be shut off completely. That's my guess. But let's have a look. So, third try. We are now measuring the resistance. As you see, right now, we don't have any connection at all and therefore we don't measure any resistance. Now, I'm trying to do this so you can see us. We connect the top bars and nothing happens but push a little further till nothing happens so something is not connected let's go to kilo ohm so the the magnitude doesn't change without you can't see the small k here can you okay still overload so we connect the top by pushing a little in and we see we get a few 3 kilo ohms 4 kilo ohms and now we press full and we get 0 0.05 kilo ohms and if I align them correctly then we don't get barely any resistance at all and if I lift it here it disengages and it rises again. So basically it's a resistor. Nice. Uh, I don't see any way to get in there right now, but maybe I find a way soon. Righty, let's go to the second one. This is also just put in here. You know, the best tool is always the tool you have at hand. And therefore, let's try the multi-tool. One day I will have a leather man, but until then... And also I won't be able to take the leather man everywhere where I can go. Because the good thing about this thing, this guy here is, if you are at the security point and you forgot to take it out, you can just tell them, okay, no problem, and ditch the blade. And you are left with just a piece of metal. Okay. Long story short, there is no screw here. And given the price point of the other device, I don't think there will be any screw there. Okay, let me get the next tool. Alrighty, look at this. That's a beauty, isn't it? The biggest screwdriver I was ever able to find. Nice. Let's see what 20 years of development did. What? Well, let's see what 20 years of price cutting development allowed us to do. Come on, give it up. Oh, 
work smart, not hard. And again, this is our trusted spring. This is just plastic with a lever. Oh, can you see it? It is really bad. Where is my light? Oh, can you see it? There is a lever to push on what we will see now. It's all greasy, of course. Why not? Where's the stuff I want to keep? There's the stuff I want to keep. And this is gone. <laughs> all right. Let's see if we can find some parallels. The strain relief is some kind of clamped metal stuff in here. So they saved at least two screws. The electrical components are more, but maybe cheaper. And we have... It's so greasy. Oh, okay. There. We have like... This sliding action, this fader. It's actually just a fader, like in the audio equipment. That's cool. And basically, again, this, this is um, just a resistive element. So by sliding, you will change the resistance. And you also have, like with the other one, like a kind of button to tell it when it's fully pressed or fully not pressed. Right, in the resting position it is fully pressed. And where this thing just controls the flow of the power, right? So we had the power coming in here and going out here and this just restricted how much was going through. This thing on the other hand is just used to control our friend here most likely which then will provide the power. So it's basically computerized, not computerized, but <coughs> done with electronics than just pure brute force. Steady, okay. There are just two screws in there and this is a really basic PCB. So slider. Okay, they have one spring more, but let's just wire. Get this out of the way. This is just plastic again, and this is. Oh, no. I think they just put this thing on top. Yep, that's really easy. It's just like a clip that clips in here. And the engineering and thought is just in this plastic thing that accepts the pin and then locks it in place. And you have another two screws and these flying arch that was screwed down. You saved those. That's just plastic from 05, 2005. ABS. And gone. It's really cool. That's like the difference in 20 years. This is done electronically and this is just done brute forcingly. Nice. But no heatsink, nothing. So yeah, I think they don't expect you to use it like 50 hours or a whole day. Okay. Get those wieder here. Okay, but that's for the control. Um, next time we take a look under those machines and 
see what they have to offer to us, to our learning. I'm especially interested in the mechanism because this is all mechanically and you can switch all those patterns just by dialing the right number in here. And that's really, I'm really interested to see how they did this. But anyway, see you. Thanks for watching, subscribe.